case takes place in Florida with Kevin and his friends deciding to start their own militia group. So Kevin was born on the 16th of June 1977 and together with a few of his friends they decided to start their own group called the Lords of Chaos and their only aim was to reign terror on the entire county. On April 12, 1996, the group and its founding members, that is Kevin Donald Foster, Pete McNaughty and Christopher Black, they decided to go on a vandalization spree where they burned a church bus and a bird's nest that ended up killing one of the birds. So after a field night of destruction, Kevin told his two buddies that, hey, let's make this official and form like a militia group. And they, they, they felt like it was a good idea. So their aim, the aim of this group would be to reign terror on the entire community. And so they sat down and made it official. And the symbol of the group was a null sign, which was an inside joke made among themselves when Kelvin had given a wrong answer in a math test. And the answer was supposed to be no said and he wrote no which made it wrong so it was like an inside joke among themselves and which leads me to think of how self-centered the guy was because first he was already the ringleader of the group he's going to be like the one calling the shots and most of the things they are going to do is just going to be about him and those other guys were just blindly following him so after all of their hard work and vandalization, there was a news article, there was a news report. Obviously, everything went out the next day. People saw how things were burnt and everything. There was a news article that wrote mocking them and the work that they had done. The news article called them peed brain vandals and persons of less than average intelligence. And this drove them crazy. They were so upset, like after all the hard work they had put into that and that's what people think of them so they decided on the on april 17th they decided to sit together as a group at this point derek shields was in and out of the group he was not yet sure if he wanted to be part of it they decided to sit together as a group and put out a document which was called declaration of war formal introduction to the lots of chaos and they originally planned to send these documents to like the county officers and everything but apparently they grew some brain cells and decided not to and you should know that before this before all of this started the only person who had a criminal record before all of the uh, group things started was kevin foster and his criminal record was not for like something violent he just had driving violations so he was not some sort of a crazy kid and the others had clean records they had not been in trouble before all of this an extract of the documents they wrote had something written in it like this lee county is dealing with a formidable foe with high caliber intelligence which goes to say what i said it was they were so hurt by what the newspaper said and they were trying to like reinforce their intelligence upon the people and balls of titanium alloy. Wow, they really had balls of titanium alloy. <laughs> Be prepared for destruction of biblical proportion, for this is the coming of a new God, whose fiery hand would lay waste to the populace. The games have just begun and terror shall ensue. So be prepared for the coming of a new God, the God they referred to Foster who was the group leader because they had um, names that they called each other amongst themselves and Kevin Foster's was God, Pete was Fried, Christopher Black was Slim and Derek Shields was called Mob. So in order to reinforce their status to everyone who was watching as the real Lords of Terror, they decided to do something which was a bit bigger and which would probably show they have more intelligence. This was to take place on April 19th, which was to commemorate the Oklahoma City bombing because Kevin Foster found people like Timothy McVeigh as really smart and intelligent, which was... Those were the type of people he looked up to, people who had created terror and chaos. And he felt that he, he looked up to them like his role model. So he wanted his acts of terror to commemorate that one. But it failed. So they ended up doing it on April 20th. And this was when they went to a monumental Coca-Cola plant 
and decided to bomb it. Costa had the other crew members put propane tanks that they had stolen from a local, so they didn't have enough money to even buy those. Yeah, they had stolen from a local, put them around the Coca-Cola tank, and he filled a Pepsi bottle. Yeah, it was like a joke to them. Filled a Pepsi bottle full of gunpowder, lit it, and they all moved back. And he shot it into the building. And soon there was a huge explosion while the boys sat at a picnic they had arranged to watch the view of the chaos that they had created. That explosion that day costed at least a hundred thousand dollars worth of damages and six days later, April 26th, the boys decided to carjack Derek Shields landlord because he had just hated him for a long time. Ever since he heard him call his mother the B word and a poor white trash. So they carjacked the guy and let him go on harm. They just wanted to teach him a little lesson. Now, on the 30th of April, the boys decided to go to a local store where they could steal some costumes and clothes because they were preparing for the grad night. They could not afford it, obviously. And so they went to the store to steal some. And the plan was to gather as many costumes as they wanted. And they actually planned to use those costumes to shoot minorities at an amusement park. So they got into the store, gathered the costumes, and they plan to let a grenade go off while the smoke is distracting everyone. They'll be able to escape with the clothes. But the plan failed them, so they were unable to carry on with their stealing. All of their plans were failing that night, and it was really upsetting for the boys. So they decided to go to one of the schools where most of the group members attended, Riverdale High School, and just vandalize a bit so they can feel something for the night. So they went into the auditorium. They stole a few little items that they could just carry around and then threw a bottle of gasoline with a lead rack on it into the auditorium. But what they did not know was one of the teachers who was the band director at the time, Mac, he was still there. And so while the boys, as they usually do, while the boys sat down and they were admiring the work, like, oh, wow, this is good. This feels good. Mr. Mac saw them and when he saw them he was like okay hey i know you guys and expect the police to be at your house tomorrow so obviously they are scared they are worried what about them going to jail and one of the boys was like this has to be taken care of tonight this was his quote this has to be fixed tonight because tomorrow is a school day so he's got to die tonight so the boys started working on their plan to try to get a hold of Mr. Mark's house and they finally did that. This is something that the CEO and his few board members needed to handle. So all the other members of the Lots of Chaos went home and it was only left with the core founding members. That's Kevin, Pete, Derek and Chris. So the four guys on their way to Mark's house decided to plan who is going to do what. So Kevin Foster was going to be the one who is going to shoot. Derek Shields was going to knock on the door. Pete McNulty was going to be the lookout while Chris Black was going to be the getaway driver. On their way there, the boys were really excited about their first official murder. At least Kevin was, and it serves him right to be the shooter because he was like the leader of this group. And Kevin sang this, his own deranged version of Santa Claus is coming tonight. And this is like the ending lyrics of it. You better watch out, you better not cry, you better shut up and prepare to die. Kevin Foster's coming to your house. Yep. At approximately 11.30 p.m. that night, while Mark was at home trying to sleep, he heard a knock at his door and he just went to open the door and immediately he opened the door. A 12-gauge shotgun was blasted at his face and police believe that that's the shot that actually killed him. And while the guys were there, they had this notion that he was a homosexual and decided to shoot him a second bullet at his butt. And as stupid as they come, the boys believe that these bullets were not going to be traced back to them. So they left the shells of the two bullets there and drove off for the night, having taken care of the problem that they had that night. So now there's a crime being committed and the police are absolutely lost as to what to do. They had no idea where this crime was coming from. They actually believed that the teacher, Mike, had been in some love triangle and maybe this was the result of it. And they were totally lost until the lots of chaos themselves showed their hand. So one of the group members, Craig, was like bragging. And the crazy part, he was not even there that day, but he was bragging about on May 2nd, just, just 
one or two days after the incident happened, he was bragging about them killing the teacher to his girlfriend, Julie. Now, he told Julie that he was there and his mom actually knocked on the door and he was just like taking responsibility for his group and being proud of it. Now, Julie heard it and she was like, oh, okay. But when she went to sleep, she could not sleep and she was just like worried that about the sick person she was actually with. And so she decided to call the police and tell them what she knew. So after committing murder, the boys were not ready to rest. They were like, what's next? What's the next big thing that we can do? And so they were planning to go and rob one of the restaurants where Pete and Derek worked at. But before they could get there, the police was able to get Craig, which was one of the lesser members. And he then confessed everything to the police. Oh, we we're responsible for the Coca-Cola band burning and for all the small things they had done including the murder and also he told the police about their next adventure that they were planning to go and rob that restaurant and the police was able to learn that he was actually not there the day of the murder and they got the names of the people who were actually there and they were able to arrest them when they were literally on their way to go and rob the restaurant after being arrested the group realized just how messed up their lives had become and two of the lesser known members who were not really involved they just let them go including the craig guy who spoke to his girlfriend about everything they were just allowed to go with no charges filed while chris burnett this is not chris black this was one of the lesser known guys chris burnett and one tom guy they both turned state's evidence and decided to plead guilty to the arson and vandalization thing and they both had two years and one year in prison with 10 years of probation while they are going to testify against the rest of the group. So Pete McNaughty, remember the guy who was the lookout? He pled guilty to conspiracy to commit murder. So he got 32 years in prison, which was each year for Mark's life, the teacher they killed. He got 32 years in prison and he accepted to testify against the other guys. Now, that's to tell you that if you're dumb enough to follow your friends to go commit murder, maybe you should play the lookout because you have the chance to live a life after jail. Derek Shields and Chris Black decided to stay and they were like, they're going to do the trial. But just two weeks before the trial, they were like, okay, fine, I give up. And they pled guilty to first degree murder that left them with life imprisonment yep like two so able kids who had like a future and had plans for their life they decided to dash everything to the floor for just like a few minutes of fun of vandalization it's just crazy kevin foster after shooting two bullets into this man's life into this man's body he was still offered life imprisonment he was given a deal okay take life imprisonment plead guilty and without the possibility of parole and he felt like no this cannot be possible and he told his lawyer bob jacob he was like bob i consider this a worse fit than being sent to the electric chair so let's go to trial and bob was like okay fine your wish is my command so on march 3rd 1998 the trial started and foster's mom was like my baby was at home with me she came and really testified i don't know why they didn't even get half a perjury because she came and testified she was like my baby was with me he was at home all night that day and they were just watching her when the friends came over and the, those ones who had turned state evidence, when they came over, they came and started talking. Oh, he was not just the ringleader of the group. He planned everything and he literally executed it in front of us. On March 11, just after two hours and 16 minutes of deliberation, the jury were like, yeah, he's guilty. Get him out of here. And on April 9th, the jury had to come and deliberate again on if he should get the death penalty or just life imprisonment or something. And the jury voted 9 to 3 that he should get the death penalty. And the judge agreed with them and he was sentenced to death. In the year 2000, Foster wanted to try for an appeal and courts were like, shut up, you did it, get out of here. So he did not get that. And you remember Foster's ride or die mom? Yeah, they decided to cook up a plan to go and murder all of the friends who had testified against him. So they were planning to get like revenge murder and they got one of the guys who was writing a story about the lot of chaos. They were telling him like, okay, come and join into the plan. So he was like, hey cops. These people were planning to go and commit murder. And so his mom got five years in prison and he got some additional years to his death row. Like he has nothing to lose. She, yeah, she was crazy. So Foster still remains in jail on the death row waiting for his day with the electric chair. And this is one of those cases where you are like, 
if there's different levels of like classified information that you need top military people to access that type of classified information this is like classified level of dumbness because they literally had their lives in front of them no one had done anything wrong to them to make them come up with such a crazy plan but they chose these lives for themselves and they totally deserve what they got who i feel bad for is the teacher who was just trying to do the right thing and ended up losing his life what do you guys think about these kids let me know in the comments and see you tomorrow with another video just like this remember to like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe and turn on post notifications be the best version of yourselves goodbye